Okay, so once again, this is the MLA citation workshop. My name is Patty Sofis. I'm a librarian here. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, why we cite sources um, and let's see here. Why is it crucial to cite your sources and what you need to cite? Um, and then we will actually go through the process of finding some resources and using um, live citation generators on our um, library resources and um, show you how to check those machine generated citations against style guides that are available to you. The MLA style we have, um, and we also have uh, uh, condensed versions and uh, short lists that you can refer to as you're going through the process of citing using MLA style. So first of all, we're gonna look at uh, a video, which is um, what is plagiarism? And so uh, that is one of the things that uh, citing your sources helps you to avoid. So we'll just take a look at this video now. Let's see if I have to do this. Hey, my name's Paige, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is the crispiness of the breading and the tender. I'm afraid some of you may have relaxed too much and didn't actually write your own papers. In fact, I believe a certain few of you took almost everything right off the internet. Damn. Worry you might be him? Then you should definitely keep watching. Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. Plagiarism is when you use someone else's words or ideas without crediting the source and pass it as your own. It's okay to use others' words and ideas, but you have to cite them. Committing plagiarism might save you time for a short while, but it comes at a high price. Depending on your institution's rules and the type of plagiarism, you might fail your course or even get suspended or expelled from your university. And no one wants that, right? Let's talk about five types of plagiarism you might encounter. Although they differ in severity, it's still not acceptable to commit any kind of plagiarism. And plagiarism checkers like Turnitin can detect all of them very easily. Verbatim plagiarism, also known as copy and paste plagiarism, as its name suggests, is when you directly copy and paste text from a source without citing the author. If you want to use an author's exact words, you need to quote the original source by putting it in quotation marks and include an in-text citation. Check out our video on how to quote. Imagine a patchwork. You take different pieces of cloth and make it into a whole. That's exactly what patchwork or mosaic plagiarism is. You copy phrases and ideas from different sources and put them together to create a new text. In order to piece the different text together nicely, this kind of plagiarism often includes some paraphrasing. It also requires a little more effort than the rest. So if you're already putting in the effort anyways, might as well completely avoid it. If you need a little help on paraphrasing, I got you. Click this video here. Paraphrasing plagiarism is the most common type of plagiarism, so pay extra attention. It's completely okay to paraphrase, but just because you wrote it in your own words doesn't make the idea yours. So remember to give credit and cite the original source. Global plagiarism is when you take someone else's work entirely and use it as your own. That includes if you find a text online and submit it as your own, but also if you get someone to write your essay for you, like her. But this is the exact same paper, word for word, that you can buy for $15 on termpaper.com. It even has the same title and footnotes. Maybe they copied my paper. <laughs> this is one of the most serious type of plagiarism as it involves deliberately and directly lying about the authorship of a work. So don't even think about it. You can also commit plagiarism by reusing the work you've previously submitted. This is called self-plagiarism. So no turning in a paper you've already submitted for another class or recycling ideas developed from previous assignments. Just because it's your own work, it still counts as academic dishonesty because you've already gotten credit for the work. Woohoo! Now you're ready to move on to how to avoid plagiarism. Click this video here. But before you go, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you there.
Okay, so that's just a little um, background information. And here is a table um, that repeats what we were just learning about, the different types of plagiarism, which you might have been aware of some or all of these. But um, one thing to keep in mind is that it's, uh, except for the very first um, type of plagiarism, which is global plagiarism, where you actually buy a paper off the internet or copy large chunks of text or even an entire work and, and try to submit it as your own work. Um, that is an intentional um, type of plagiarism and that's partly what makes it so severe. Um, but these other types are often something that you will do unintentionally by accident. Um, any of these other types of plagiarism, it's easy to accidentally uh, do unless you keep track of your sources as you're going, take notes about the resources you're using and um, copy and paste citations or type citations into a works cited document as you are in the process of doing your research. So what is MLA style and how do you cite using the MLA citation style? MLA style um, is a, uh, it's a reference, of, it's a set of standards and rules, and um, it's produced by the Modern Language Association. And that association is an association of language and literature scholars. And so the humanities and um, literature and English departments often use MLA style um, for uh, references and citing um, when they're writing papers. And this is, uh, I don't know if you can see, but this is the MLA handbook. We have the physical book here. We also have an online uh, database version of this, which includes the contents of the book. And so the book includes a style guide. Um, it, it gives you advice on grammar and sentence structure. Um, it gives you some advice on how to proceed in doing research, but it mostly consists of um, citation examples and um, explanations of how you give credit to um, authors when you're doing research. Um, so this is a source that we have copies of in the library and you can borrow them or you can use the online database and, um, and access it. But we have a lot of condensed versions of this, as I mentioned, and I'm gonna be showing you some of those um, as well. So, Let's take, um, the other question is, how do you cite using the MLA style? Um, and that's what we're gonna cover in this workshop. I am gonna show one more video before we cut over to actually um, setting up a works cited page and, and uh, finding and citing some sources. But let me show you the video. It's, uh, this is from the eighth edition. We're currently using the ninth edition. That's this version is the ninth edition of the MLA handbook. It's the latest. It's not that different from the eighth edition. The eighth edition, which was a major overhaul um, that really tried to bring in all of the latest types of resources people are using um, online and, and others. So let's take a look at this. Um, it's from McMaster University Libraries. And I think it's a good um, introduction to how to, the kinds of things you need to cite and how to cite. As I'm in the midst of applying for residency right now, wish me luck, Grammarly has again been a lifesaver with my application and helping me write MLA Style Guide was recently updated to meet the information needs present in the digital age. The new Style Guide features a universal set of guidelines that can be applied to any kind of work. It is important to ensure that you cite all the sources that you consult for your assignments. This includes sources that have been quoted, paraphrased, or summarized. If you didn't come up with the idea, it needs a citation. Citations are important because they ensure that you are properly attributing ideas to their creators. Citations also allow other people to access and evaluate the sources that you have consulted in your assignment. It's important to include both in-text citations as well as a works cited list. 
First, we will focus on how to create a works cited list, which will be at the end of your assignment. When thinking about how to cite sources in MLA format, the first things to consider are the core elements of the source. The core elements are author, title of source, title of container, other contributors, version, number, publisher, publication date, and location. So for example, if I'm referencing Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, I can find the following core elements. Different kinds of sources contain different kinds of information. The goal of MLA citations is to provide the reader with the most complete citation possible. It is okay if your source does not contain all of the core elements. The new edition of the MLA makes it easy to include the information that is available and exclude the information that is not. After you have listed your core elements, it is time to compile the core elements into a citation. A complete citation may look like the following. Notice that after each core element, there is either a period or a comma. For Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, our citation may look something like this. Author, title of source, other contributors, version, publisher, publication date, and location. Once you have finished creating a citation for all of your sources, they must be properly formatted. First, make sure that your list is presented in alphabetical order. Second, make sure that if the citation is more than one line, the second line has been indented five spaces from the left. Lastly, ensure that the entire list is double spaced. In addition to works cited, your assignment must also contain in-text citations. In-text citations help the reader find the corresponding entry in the works cited list and the passage in that source. In MLA, in-text citations include the first entry in the works cited list, which is usually the author, and then a page number. Depending on your sentence structure, you can create an in-text citation in a few different ways. The author and the page number may be at the end of the passage, or author may be included in the sentence and the page number listed at the end of the passage. Need more help? McMaster Libraries has an MLA style guide that provides easy to understand step-by-step -step directions to creating citations. Or how about the Purdue Online Writing Lab MLA style guide? Prefer reading a hard copy? Come access the 8th edition of the MLA Handbook at Mills Library. Need a little more guidance? Ask a librarian. Okay. That's those two. Okay, so there was this mention of the 8th edition again. And just uh, keep in mind, oh, Hello, we had someone new. Welcome. Good morning. Um, so uh, the eighth edition, some instructors will ask you to use the eighth edition. Some will insist that you use the ninth edition. Um, and as a matter of fact, instructors have sometimes um, have specific instructions for you to use when using either of those. So the main thing to know is that these are guidelines and it's most important to follow your instructor's um, wishes and, and their instructions about how to cite sources using the MLA style. Um, so I'm gonna show you one more um, page. This is a, a sample works cited page from a online writing lab called Excelsior online writing lab. And we're gonna, I'm gonna take you to a sample paper that's located on that uh, website so that you can see an example of in-text citations and how they work. Uh, just here. Okay, so Excelsior Online Writing Lab, um, they have all different types of information, including instructions on how to do work cited, but we're gonna just take a look here at the MLA sample um, paper, uh, the second one, which is in ninth edition um, format. And so I will, uh, let's just take a look at this uh, sample paper. If I scroll down to the bottom of the paper, I'm going to see at the end of the paper, the works cited that have been um, cited within the uh, paper itself, the in-text citations. So I'm gonna go up here 
again to the first page to find the first in-text citation. And it happens to be the, after the first sentence in the paper. So this sentence is a paraphrase or a summary of some kind, and so it has to be cited. And so in parentheses, which is why they also call this a parenthetical citation, just simply because it's in parentheses, we put the author's last name and the page number in the resource that this information came from. So that allows the reader to zero right in on where that information came from. So I'm gonna go down to the MLA uh, hand, uh, citation page, work cited, it's called work cited. And I'm gonna look for that author. Here's Eisman, it happens to be the first one out. This is an alphabetical list, by the way, it's a, a coincidence that it's the first listing. And here is the title of the article that that um, text came from. It appeared in that article was published in Critical Quarterly, uh, the, if that's a journal. And I know because they're listing the volume and the uh, issue number, which is what you do for scholarly journals in MLA style. It gives the year. If there were other dates uh, given, it would do that and the page numbers and then a, a URL, which is a digital object identifier, uh, which is a unique um, link to this resource. The thing to note is that this is it was on page 64, I think they said, so it is within this page range, the pages 55 to 72. So that way the reader can go right to that source and get the context of, of the, um, the text that appears in your paper. So, and it also is, is giving credit to that author. So that is that example. Notice too that this sample work cited as you saw, they were giving the some of the formatting. It's uh, all double spaced. It has the hanging indent, five uh, excuse me, half an inch. So this is a good example of what that should look like. So let's see here. So are there any any questions so far? Why would your own work still count as dishonesty? It's um, it's a it's it's a little uh, almost less dishonest. That's a very good question. Um, it's more of um, the fact that you're in, if you use it's when you use something that you've written before and submit it for another assignment, another class, another for another reason but you don't indicate that it, it is um, something that you have done in the past, not for a new assignment or a new class. Um, that is where you're not being completely transparent and upfront uh, because the, the, you, whoever you're submitting it to assumes that you are doing the work for that current project. Um, and also it really, you can work around that by rewriting um, the, uh, existing document that you created to uh, meet the requirements of the latest assignment. So that's that's why it would um, it, it would still be considered not um, completely transparent and um, you know above board. So think of it as um, this is an, an you're a scholar you're in the academy when you're in college. And um, when you have you have a new assignment, but you use an old resource that you created for the new assignment, it, it just may not be completely um, above board. Does that does that help? Does that make sense? Okay, great. Okay, that's a really good question, and that's one that surprises people. I'm. You know, I really wasn't familiar with that until I started looking at these things more closely. Um, again, and uh, that one is, you may not be aware that that's plagiarism and that's where the unintentional, you know, accidental or unintentionality comes in. Okay, so now we're gonna leave the PowerPoint until the very end, we'll come back for just a couple of um, details to look at and some resources. 
but I want to show you the process of setting up a works cited page. And um, also, I'm going to take you to a couple of places on the library website. So just here, um, we're going to go. Um, so this is the library website. And um, you, in one of those videos, they mentioned the Purdue Online Writing Lab as a source for examples of citations other than going to the MLA handbook itself. So on our library website, there is this link called Citation Style Guidelines. If I click on that, it um, shows me some options. I'm going to choose MLA formatting and style guide, and it does say here Purdue Online Writing Center. Um, and so if I look at this, this gives you, it's a, it's a resource, and it's a, it's a good one for getting reliable examples and information about how to cite your sources. And so, and it includes a few other things. One thing it does though, is gives us a little ad. So I'm gonna close that. And um, so if you're looking at a book, it, you could go here and see the, um, the correct citation for a book. I'll just open it so you can see what it looks like. Um, so it tells you what kind of information you need. Um, and this is showing the eight, but it also um, includes the, um, the new, the changes with the ninth edition. And so what they do is break it down for you, tell you, well, what, what do you need to include in a citation for a book? And they explain, they give you the elements, like the, the last name and first name of the author, the title um, in italics, they're showing you the format too, the publisher. You don't actually need the city of publication anymore, um, the publication date, and um, and that's it. And they show you the punk correct punctuation. And then they give you samples of books that have been cited. So you can compare because there will be different scenarios. Sometimes you'll have one author, two authors, multiple authors, um, different editions of books. So th this is where all of those kinds of details can be found. So that's um, a, an important um, link on our library website. The other one, which is uh, here on our research guides, uh, we have an introduction to research. And that is under general purpose, introduction to research. And this has some you know, instruction on how to do research. So it's, it's useful, but it, we're focusing in on creating citations. So this is an overview of a few important things you need to know about creating citations. And then they list specific styles and we're gonna look at MLA style. But let me just click on creating citations. So why, you know, we were wondering why do you cite? And I'm just gonna take a moment to um, underscore what we saw in the videos. Um, so citing your sources is an important part of the research process. It gives credit to the authors of the sources you use. That's really primary. It demonstrates your credibility um, and scholarship. Uh, and it leaves a trail for your readers to follow. And then it does prevent plagiarism, intentional or unintentional. So. Um, when to cite, you cite when you're using an exact quote, when restating or paraphrasing an idea from a resource, when summarizing a work, um, or when collaborating with others to produce knowledge. So if you didn't come up with an idea yourself, you need to cite it if you include it in a paper. Um, that's basically the rule. And if you're not sure, go ahead and cite just to be on the safe side. You know, sometimes you're doing research, you lose track of what your ideas are and the ideas that you've read are. So it's safer to just go ahead and cite if you're not sure. And then there's a little bit more of a discussion about plagiarism. The reason I like to show this is because it talks about avoiding plagiarism by um, taking steps to keep track of your work. And that I mentioned that before, 
But here it sort of just enumerates that to use your own words and ideas, um, you know, try to um, synthesize what you're learning as you investigate a topic um, so that you can write about it, give credit, uh, don't make, just make small changes. Um, uh, if it's common knowledge, um, it must really be common knowledge. So for example, you know, um, Joe Biden is the president of the United States. If you saw that in a source, you wouldn't have to cite it as such. It's just stating that he is the president and that is common knowledge. That's an example of that. Um, but if something is controversial, then it's even more important um, and just to be sure that it's common knowledge. And then again, when in doubt, cite. So, and here you also wanna be sure to just work with taking good notes and keeping track of your process. There is an, a short video on plagiarism here that one of our librarians created. So these research guides are created by librarians here at SMC. And this is really, um, you don't have to, go to a lot of different spots to get um, the information you need for citing sources. So I'm gonna go here to MLA style. This is just, we have the book, this is the call number. You can find the MLA handbook on the shelf in the library um, if it's not checked out. And then this is um, a link to the uh, online version, which is in a, one of our databases in the library. It's online collection and it's, the handbook is there. So this gives you additional, this mentions that Purdue OWL that we went and looked at, so you can get there from here as well. It had, they have a sample MLA paper. And then um, this site includes uh, how to cite government publications, but it also talks more specifically about the differences between the eighth and ninth edition in case that's something you're interested in. Um, and uh, let's see. This um, is a link to a short video. I'm going to be showing you how to create hanging indents, but after today's workshop, if you have a you know, question or you want to get your memory refreshed, you can watch that. Um, it's a, like one minute and 49 second video on how to set up your works cited page and create the hanging indent. Um, and here is a the short reference sheet, which includes a lot of different examples of citations, like how to cite a book or a journal article in MLA style. It'll give you an example, sort of like what Purdue Owl does, but here it's a bit more compact and might be a nice quick reference for you. This you have to download in order to read. I downloaded it in advance, so I'm, I'm going to just um, show you what that looks like real quick, and then we'll start looking for resources. So this is that guide, and it um, gives you some more details about in-text citations and um, links to a previous MLA citation workshop. Um, and it includes this nice um, page with the elements that you need to include in a work cited. Um, and uh, for a particular resource, any resource, you're including authors, title of source, title of container. Um, this will make more sense when we're looking. And all of these other pieces, which we saw in the video, so that they're here. You don't have to remember what was in the video. Um, and these are called core elements. And then down below this, we have those same elements listed and there's more of an explanation of what that involves. So this is a good um, source for you, I think, as you're doing, if you wanna have a quick reference guide to look at. And so now I'm going to um, go to Microsoft Word and we're going to um, set up a page and we're going to look for some sources in our library uh, from our library website. And here we have um, a blank page. This is the desktop version of Microsoft Word. Um, and it has this ribbon and a ruler, which are you know standard for setting up a page. 
In this version, you're going to see that you go to paragraph in order to uh, set up your um, uh, works cited page. I do want to um, show you what happens if you just start working without setting it up and show you that you can apply these, the formatting to your page after you've started um, as well. So if I go to um, no, it's uh, insert header. Um, I'm going to choose this blank three columns because you put your last name in the, um, up, the upper right corner in MLA. And this is actually setting it up. It, you would set this up for the whole, your whole paper. And it would then also appear on your works cited automatically. But we're just going to set this up for the works cited page, which comes at the end of your paper. So let me just type in my last name. And I'm going to um, delete these two. And um, then I'm going to close the header. And um, if I want to, I want to call this um, page works cited and it needs to be centered. So I'm going to use this uh, center. Uh, these are, this is your um, uh, format and I'm going to the center instead of the left in uh, left margin. And I can just say works cited. Notice that it's a plural. Um, it's actually because you're going to have multiple um, uh, resources listed, which are the works that you're citing. And so then um, I can, I will, if I hit the, you know, I'm just going to hit the enter key and um, I'm going to go back. And if I, I don't think that this is, this is not going to include the, um, the formatting that we're looking for, but I'm going to, because I haven't set it up yet. And I'll do that in a moment. So what we're going to do now is go um, over to, um, oops, we're going to go to the library website, and we're going to search um, for a few things. I'm I'm just going to use the topic of uh, climate change, and I'm going to look for a couple of books and a journal article and a newspaper article, so you can see the process. So here I'm in one search, and that's where I can search for books. Um, and so I'm going to just type in climate change and hit enter. And I get a result list here. And uh, can everybody see the screen okay? I, I hope that it's um, all showing up all right, but let me know if, it, if it's not. Um, okay. so. Here we have over 500,000 results, but I'm going to limit my search right away to books. And notice it says refine your results. So I'm clicking on format and I'm going to choose books. And there are about 3,600 books. And so I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to actually limit to a more recent uh, date. This, not all of those books are going to be um, accurate or, or relevant anymore. So I'm going to say uh, 2018 to 2023. So I just clicked on this menu, publication date 2018, and I'm refining. Notice up here, these are my active filters. So we're looking for books that were published between 2018 and 2023. So now I'm going to check for a book. I'm going to, I'm looking, notice that some of these books are in the library and some or online. I'm going to start by choosing a book that's in the library. So um, Drought, Flood, Fire, this is a paper copy of a book. And I know that because it says available at Maine Stacks. And that's the call number. No, that's the lo shelf location based on the subject of the book. So I'm going to click on the title. And I get details about this book, including some subject terms that I can note and a description. And if I scroll back up, I can see that I have these options. I can email this citation to myself. I can create a permalink to the citation, not to the book itself, um, but just to this listing. 
and I can print this listing. But what I want is citation. So I click on citation and notice that this is the MLA 8th edition. So that's what I want. They don't include the ninth edition yet in this in our catalog, which in one search yet. So we we're still working with the eighth edition um, sample citation here. But if I clicked on seventh edition, it would change the same. This is the same reference, but because the seventh edition was different, the citation looks different. So I'm going to go back to eighth edition. Just remember, you need to be sure you're using the latest. Um, version of MLA. And then I can copy this citation to the clipboard. And that allows me then to go back over to my Word document and I can um, paste it. So this is what it looks like. Um, the formatting is not correct yet. I need to fix that. But at least I have the major elements. And sometimes, most of the time, it's pretty accurate in terms of what it includes. There, you'll find that you always have to check it against a style guide like the ones we were looking at. So, first thing I notice is that there are a couple extra spaces here. So, I'm taking those out. Um, now, I don't have, um, it's not going to, it's not, I haven't set it up to have the hanging indent, in, indent yet. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and do that now. I'm just gonna, um, I'm going to highlight, well, I'm gonna highlight the text. You might have to uh, change this separately because let me use works cited too. Um, and uh, the header I might have to do separately, but um, I've got this and I'm gonna go to my paragraph setting. And I want to make sure the left and right is at zero and the spacing should be zero for both of these. So it's easy to remember, oops, because it's all zero. Then here is where you choose hanging indent. So you get that five, um, half an inch uh, indentation on the second and subsequent lines of each of your citations. So I click on this down arrow and I'm going to choose hanging. And it automatically now is choosing 0 0.5. Um, so that's a half an inch hanging indent. Next, I have to change the line spacing because remember the document has to be double spaced. So I'm going to click on change multiple to double. And then I'm going to um, leave that alone. And I'm going to check this box. Don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. That way, there won't be any extra spaces between your citations. Um, it'll your whole document, including the um, title and and the, each of the citations, will be double spaced throughout your document. So I've got that all set up, and I can sit, click OK. I want to mention that if you're using Microsoft Office 365, uh, they also let you do this, and I, um, it, but you might have to um, find the uh, classic ribbon, which is what we're looking at here, by clicking on a menu. And if I have time at the end, I'll show you that. Um, but it, it is, you're gonna get a similar dialog box and the settings are all going to be the same. It's just that they don't, um, the default is not to provide this full ribbon and that little paragraph option. So I, I will show you that at the end. Um, so now look what it did. It, it went ahead and um, gave us, an, uh, the highlighted text was reformatted. Now it didn't count this because I had not included the, um, I'm not sure why that happened, but I have to delete that. Okay, so now when I, I go, I'm gonna put my cursor back at the end of this and hit enter, so I'm positioned to add the next resource. Um, so I'm not using my return key when I'm not typing this in, I'm copying and pasting it. But even if, if I was typing, I wouldn't like hit enter if I thought I was passing the right margin. Instead, I would just keep typing and because I've set up this hanging indent, whatever, when it runs out of space, it will automatically provide that hanging indent on the next line. So now what else is here? We've got a little extra space. I see that um, the title 
of a book is in italics. And we saw that um, in the MLA style, uh, but you can just refer to those when you're doing your work cited to make sure it's correct. And then university press should be uh, abbreviated. So I'm gonna take out, and I know this just from doing this so often, but there is a whole section in the MLA style guide on abbreviations. And so, let me see, is it UP? Um, we shouldn't separate that. Hmm. Uh, well, that's a little detail. Um, it, it's usually um, I am, let me see if I can. Maybe there's an extra space here between there. Okay. So there was an extra space and it, it was preventing it from flowing correctly. So now we have that right. And I just um, see it. And we're going to now go and look for an ebook. Um, so I'm going back to the library website. Um, back to the result list. And this was a, a fine um, result list. So um, I'm just going to stay with it. And I'm looking for a title um, Climate Future. Let me just see here. I'm going to actually select um, the collection. These are all ebooks and they come from, oh, I did not um, limit it to available online. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I don't have to weed through the print books in the library. So availability, I added that to my filters, available online. And as I scroll down, I don't yet see the book um, that I, oh, here we go, Climate Future. Averting and Adapting to Climate Change. And this was written in 2022 by Robert S. Pindick. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the title to get the detailed record page. And again, we're seeing that same kind of information, a description, subject terms, and here's the citation. So I click on that, make sure it's the bold, it's bolded. So that is the eighth edition has been selected. I'm gonna copy this to the clipboard and I'm gonna go back to my, um, work cited. So, oops, I should hit the enter key. And now I'm going to say control V. Oh, hmm. okay. Well, let me go ahead and go backspace, backspace. I'm not sure why it's adding an extra space and I don't have time this morning to finesse this, but it, it, it's a solvable question. And don't worry um, if that happens to you, um, you can you can re-highlight your text and then um, apply the changes, for example, but we'll just um, go with that for now. Um, so here's the author, last name, comma, first name. The title of the book is in italics. Um, and then Oxford UP. Oh, and I probably should have when I pasted it, is it too late to say, um, paste, keep text only? Okay, let me just see, did I, I kind of messed that up. Okay, just take that out. Um, I have an extra Oxford University Press 2022, but that one is, better because it's not in italics. I don't want the publisher to be in italics, um, just the title of the book. And again, they, they're giving us this extra space um, after the title and between the subtitle and the title, so you should remove that. Um, and Oxford University Press, if I can try to do that quickly here, you delete the extra space and then P, the press. So that's this title. I don't think it, oh, I actually, 
have to delete those extra spaces. It's usually a little smoother. Of course, when I'm doing a demo, it, it's not. Um, so, okay, let's try now. We have, so I, I should include the um, digital object identifier. And I'm surprised that we didn't get that from the um, record here. Let me see. Um, hmm. I tested this at home and now I'm on this computer. I'm not quite sure, but there should be a URL and you would see it if you go to the actual resource, which we don't have time to do. Um, but uh, instead, I'm just going to say ebook edition. Um, and that will let the reader know that this is an ebook. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um right here and that doesn't need the extra two dots um and i want to make it uh not italics and i'll say um e book edition so that's your um ebook and that uh that's set so now we're going to go in and find a journal article and so I'll go back to um, the one search and close this record. At the top of this page, I can um, go to the library home page from here. So there's a navigation bar there. And I'm going to go now to the databases in order to get to um, the uh, academic journal databases. Uh, and let's see, I was going to show you there's some ebooks here, but um, you can also look at some directly, one of a particular collection of ebooks. I just wanted to point that out to you. Um, so you could choose that, and this list of all of our databases would change to just uh, display the ebook collections. So there's more than one way to get to ebooks. Um, so, but now we're going to look at academic search complete. And this um, is uh, a database that is inter uh, multidisciplinary, so it covers a lot of topic areas. It's a good one to start with. And it includes magazines and journals and some newspapers. So I'm going to look again for my subject of climate change and search. And I, um, let's see. I think I'm going to try adding a term. We have 93,000 results, and that's huge. And this is a very large topic. It's really too big, um, especially when you're starting to look at journals and magazines and newspapers. You want to get into more focused topic areas. So I'm going to say uh, electrification. And I'll just get that list, and I can search again. So now we have 90 books and uh, they're in order by what the computer feels is relevant, uh, relevance order. But I want to limit my results to much more recent. I'm going to go again to 20, uh, eight, let's try 2020. I want to see the past two and a half years about, so, um, or three and a half years. So um, here we have 65 titles, and I can sort them by date newest. Um, trying to, let's see, February. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to change this now to date newest. And um, if I look here at my looking for a specific title, New Horizons for Microgrids. This is an academic journal. They tell you that on the on the icon next to the citation uh, for these, these are all articles um, in, uh, in the database. And you're, we're looking right now at academic journal articles, but it includes magazines. Um, and when they, it's a magazine, it will say periodicals. Um, so it's important to know what you're citing um, what, and what you're using, what type of resource it is, not only because it, it, it is what the content 
reflects the type of resource, but also because it affects how you cite that resource. And academic journals are cited differently than magazine articles. So um, I'm going to go back to a choice here and I'm gonna choose this. Notice it's in HTML and PDF. I click on the link. This gives me a detailed record with subjects and an abstract, so a summary. But I'm, I'm gonna go over here to the tools. So this is an EBSCO database and you find the tools here and I can um, email this article to myself. I would put my type my SMC email or whatever email I want it to go to and then I can include a citation. So I'm gonna include the MLA 9th edition. So this is another one of those citation generators. And it, um, I click there, select it, have typed this in and send, and it confirms that it's been sent to me. So um, you can get that email article, the full article and a citation. But we're just right now doing the work cited and so we want to, and you do need the email. You do need to either email yourself the article because you're reading the article and that's part of your paper. But to cite it, I can click here right away um, and click on the cite button and scroll down. There are a variety of style guides and we're looking alphabetically for M for MLA. And then I can copy and paste this into my works cited. So I'm just control C, copying, um, paste, and then I'm gonna paste it into, whoops, wrong one, into my works cited. And let me get myself over here, and I'm changing the italics, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it. And notice that this has this uh, messy um, formatting with, you know, it's, these are artifacts from the website that we just copied this from. We need to click on this little control button and paste just as plain text. It says keep text only. So I wanna strip the formatting that that citation generator gave me because it's not right. I have, so there, I took it out and, and it looks better already. And notice that this author, the first author is listed and then you see a comma and et al. So remember, we talked about three or more authors. This is what, when you have three or more authors for an article or a book, um, you would say et al. Um, and that tells the reader and others. Um, and if they want to see all the other authors, they can go back to the source because you've provided them with the citation. They can get back to it. So here's the article title in quotes. That's right. Uh, the name of the um, Journal is energies, and that would be in italics. And again, you can just look at those style guides to um, like the MLA, um, the rep, short reference guide um, from our LibGuide or Purdue OWL. Um, and just delete that parentheses, we don't need that. And um, we've got the volume and the issue number, the date, there's not a day, so we don't have to worry about the day being part of the date, and then the page number that that article appears in the journal energies. Now EBSCO, when you use the citation generator from an EBSCO database, and we have a lot of EBSCO databases, probably, I don't know, 20 or something, different collections that the EBSCO publisher has um, you know, created uh, access to. And so, they, they list this as the, the name of the database, but that's not the name of the database. We're looking at the Academic Search Complete database. So, and Search Complete. Um, and so you have to remove EBSCOhost and then you highlight this and put that in italics. Um, so these are, the, these are places that this article resides. First in, in the journal energies, which is in the academic search complete database. And that's how you know you need to italicize um, those. And then here's another example of uh, the digital object identifier, which is preferred over a regular URL when you're doing these citations. 
Um, so that is uh, an example of the, um, oh, it's 12.33. Okay, so the workshop is, is, the time is going, and I was going to also show you a newspaper article, but I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, I, I, you would go to the newspaper databases. We were looking again at these databases um, in the library, um, on the library website, and you could go to U and go to U.S. major dailies and look up a newspaper, and they also have a, a icon that you click on to, to get their citation, their version of the MLA citation, um, and paste it into your work cited, but then you would just need to check it. So I don't have time to show you because I started late. I apologize. Let me um, just get back to um, the work cited page and show you one more detail. So uh, the order of your citations is alphabetical. So uh, we would need to move this up here um, before this author. So I'm M comes before P. So um, I, or I can just, maybe what I'll do this time is just copy the, uh, I mean, um, cut this and place it. Let me see if there's a space already here. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a blinker there. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that. So it comes after um, that author. So that's the purpose of putting the author's last name first, because that is how you alphabetize your work cited list. And I'll save it and you would continue. And there are all these other um, scenarios. You might be looking at a website or a, um, or a uh, YouTube video or a Twitter, you know, a tweet. Um, there are all these different possibilities. And as a matter of fact, I just want to show you if I go to ask um, the ALA, I mentioned that we have this book and we have the database, which is very complete. Um, and it's good we you can access that on that A to Z list under M for MLA handbook. But um, if I go to ask the ALA, it um, will give me. Um, an FAQ, let me just write FAQ here. And if I do this, oh, that's ALA. Did I say ALA? I meant um, MLA. ALA is the American Library Association. I'm oh, sorry, MLA, FAQ. And here we have frequently asked questions. Um, and there, if you go to the Style Center, um, it will give you how do I cite a comment thread in a Facebook group, or how do I cite street art, or uh, you know, can EG be used at the end? These are common, frequently asked questions. Some are about formatting, and others are you know about formatting certain um, types of resources. They're even including how do I cite generative AI in MLA style, for example. So it's it's up to date and it's it's this is the website for the association that created this handbook. And so they do answer some questions on the website there that can be helpful. So I'm going to get back um, to the PowerPoint real quick because I know you all have probably have to get going. It's I've gone over and I'm I shouldn't do that. So um, this, uh, this page, if you want to, um, this webinar will be recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel, um, which I'll just point out when we're on the final, the last page of the library website, but you will be able to watch this or refer back to it. And there's a, a QR code that takes you to a link of some of the style guides we were looking at, and also um, to, um, for example, the a Ask the ALA FAQ page. And here's a URL that takes you to the same list. It's about five or six different resources, and you can get back to that by using these tools. So to summarize, um, or just to point out that this is just the beginning where we've introduced this to you and we have um, 
We're here, the librarians are here to help you. There's also a writing and tutoring center on campus. Um, and we can direct you to that if you don't know about that yet. Um, and they can help you with, um, you know, writing your paper and um, giving you guidance on work cited. Um, we're here in person and we're also available on chat. So we're here during uh, library hours, uh, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Friday. And um, you can chat with us 24 seven. On our library webpage, there's a ask a library, ask a librarian, excuse me, um, button. And that takes you to a form where you can give us your name and your email address. That way we can share the transcript of our chat where we've shown you various resources, et cetera. So you just type in your question. We can do a Zoom session, uh, you know, informal quick Zoom link we send you and we just discuss and we share our screens with you. So it's not really, um, the video isn't really on. It's more that we're sharing our screen with you and showing you how to find the information or answer your question that you're asking. So what you can ask us that way as well. Um, the last thing, well, the, the YouTube channel is listed towards the bottom of the library homepage. So um, rather than take any more of your time, I'll just tell you that. And um, let me click on the um, code word for extra credit is OWL, which stands for Online Writing Lab. And so um, you need that. And um, if you come back to this, when it's on the recorded page in our YouTube channel, you'll see that as well. Um, I apologize for going over. I hope you will all see this. And um, that's it. So thank you for coming. And let me see, I think I have, um, I have a message at all. Um, okay, thank you. And no, no, I, I apologize. Have a great day and I hope this helped. Um, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Really appreciate your attending. So I hope it helps. And we're here anytime to help with you, help you with your with your research and your work cited. Thanks again. Have a great day. I'm gonna stop sharing now unless anybody has a last minute question. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.